So it's all about branding and marketing. Barely a realtor, more of a social media or marketing kind of a guy that just happens to do real estate. Are you a real estate investor looking to sharpen your skills or a newbie looking to become one? You're in the right place. Welcome to Where Should I Invest? Real Estate Investing in Canada with your host, Sarah Larby. Hey listeners, it is Sarah Larby here and I'm glad to have you back. Today's show is going to be a little bit different. I have a co-host on today's episode, my good friend, Sarah Edder. And Sarah Edder and I did a few episodes that we recorded together. And Sarah is a very, very talented young millennial. Her specialty as an investor is how to find money lenders and finding money to be able to acquire properties. So this year, I think she's had more than a million dollars that she's found and worked with. And she's got a really, really interesting story as well. And she is also going to be on my podcast as a guest, but I asked her to co-host a podcast or a few episodes with me. And we are interviewing Jeff Weibo on this show. And Jeff Weibo is a well-known investor and realtor in London, Ontario. He's got a YouTube channel, does a lot of great work on social media and also is one of the founders of OREC, which is a big conference where they have a lot of investors and it's educational and it's a big networking, educational real estate investing event, which I highly recommend. It was a great event and looking forward to going back to OREC this year in 2019. And Jeff has a really interesting background because he actually was in the military and the army was deployed and got back here and had about about 70 days to find a property and it was a, a really cool story that you guys will get to hear so I'm really excited I'm really excited also to be co-hosting this one with my good friend Sarah and I uh, hope you enjoy it hi Jeff great to have you on really excited to speak to you awesome so we'll get right into the questions then when did you get started in real estate investing and why don't you just give us a little bit of a background Sure. It would have been around 2009 or so. I started, I'm in the Canadian Army and I deployed to Afghanistan first time. And I got back and I did it one more time after that. So from about 2009 to 2012, I was deployed to Afghanistan. And I got back with a lot of cash because they gave me tax free money at the time. And while I was overseas, I was always thinking, oh my goodness, I need a penthouse and drive a BMW. And like, I thought that's the lifestyle I always wanted, some condo kind of lifestyle. And I got home and went right to looking at properties, but I ended up buying a triplex and lived in the basement and rented out the two units above me and had no car. So I went from penthouse, BMW to basement, no car, but this new thing called living for free. I had university students living above me and I had my own like little pad in the basement and it was pretty awesome uh, in 2012. So I was kind of just, I didn't have a network kind of like we do now. That didn't really exist. I was a RAIN member, but they didn't really handle Southwestern Ontario very much. So I had a few guys I could talk to, but nothing like it seems like now with the internet and like with Facebook going crazy with all the groups and stuff that didn't really exist. You had a couple guys you could have a one drink with and they would tell you about some of the properties they had but you didn't really know if they were doing it correctly or not so anyways that was my first property i bought a triplex there's like seven offers i did 17k over and you know at the time you think you overpaid and then now you look at it you're like oh my goodness thank god i got that because everybody wanted that you won by like three grand and you're like oh did i overpay like <laughs> so that was my first one very cool. So did you have, so you said you had no mentors, you had no networking and Sarah and I are definitely big proponents of networking and learning as much as possible. What did your family and friends say when you told them that you wanted to buy a triplex? Well, I'd say the parents didn't overly get it. Uh, they were probably calculating the wrong things. Like my dad was in insurance. So he was just kind of like only analyzing the insurance aspect of the triplex. I had to kind of put that aside a bit. And I did have one mentor, my buddy, Sean, who owned a bunch of properties in London and then in Alberta. He was a RAIN member at the time, Sean Bruce Hayes. And basically I just listened to Sean and I had stopped listening to a lot of the noise around me. Everybody trying to tell me, don't buy this, buy this, do that. Listen to one guy. He helped me run the numbers. I didn't know how to do that back then. 
and it all made sense to me then and i pulled the trigger with a little bit of backing but like there's no support like there is now i feel like everybody's super lucky right now if they just join one of these free groups that are all over the internet right now i didn't see that back then that's super interesting that you got started without having a lot of mentors and like you said groups like we have today so it sounds like you came from a very different background so what stood out to you about real estate and like what made you choose it as your vehicle for investment I think it's the quickest way to like run a business. I think if you just, if you buy some kind of a commercial business, it could take a while to have a profit, but like on day one as a landlord, you can be profitable. And that's kind of very interesting and powerful. And then obviously there's all the great cliches out there that real estate is the way to become a millionaire and all that, one of the easiest ways. But uh, yeah, it was just, I want to live for free and not pay my mortgages. So have someone else do it. So that was pretty fascinating. And then while I was deployed, you know, I could always be reading these financing books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad and uh, Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week, stuff like that. But it wasn't until I got home, I could actually put it into action. In retrospect, like there was no DocuSign or digital signatures back then, but I guess I could have been trying to buy a property from while well, gone, but I was more nervous back then. How to get back to can Canadian soil to do it. But like now people can buy properties without even being in the country. So it didn't matter what country I was in, but yeah, it just gets back to like good support network now, but yeah. Do you think being overseas gave you maybe just more drive to get it done as soon as you got back? Like, do you think it had any advantages? Well, absolutely. Uh, it gave me 70 days of leave, which extended my contract. So to the banks, it showed that I was employed, but I knew my countdown was uh, ending of a contract. So I needed to buy a property within that time frame or else I'd have been in the, I'd have to go get another full-time job and then show the banks all my employment, right? So that was the drive. And then yes, obviously being a military guy, and you're pretty calm writing this offer. And so, well, I'm not being shot at. So I don't know, it was my first offer. And he <laughs> said, most people are so afraid on their first one. So. Absolutely. So you're a realtor as well, and you work with a lot of investors. Yes. And often mm -hmm. Investors wonder, hey, should I get my license and what are the pros and cons? Can you walk us through that? Absolutely. Uh, this does get brought up a lot. So if you want to be a realtor, it's going to put you back about almost like $8,000 on day one because by the time you finish all your courses, which now is like five, and you can only kind of do them after you pass one, you can only book the next one. So it can take half a year now almost to do them all because of like the test dates. Then you start paying the board fees, then your insurance, and then your brokerage fees. and all. So you're probably like negative 10 grand. And then, oh, wow, I'm a realtor now. Maybe you make a sale, but you don't get paid for another two months. Most residential people probably move in 30 to 60 days. So then you got to wait around for that. And then you get a paycheck. So for the investor, if they think, oh, well, I'm buying all these properties, why am I uh, giving my realtor all these commission? I should just do that. Okay, but it very quickly turns into a job when you're negative 12K behind, then you're always paying 500 bucks a month, maybe to your brokerage or, you know, that'll be plus and minus with different brokerages, which kind of eats into your cash flow on your other properties. And then the problem is with being a realtor, we are liable with everything. So you have to be so careful when you're purchasing for yourself that you're not getting a better deal than the seller tries to sue you because you're a realtor and you should have known better that you're buying a property undervalued. So there's a lot of like negatives being a realtor and a real estate investor, but great for me helping out investors uh, in general. So No, that's Great. I definitely think there's a lot of, like you said, like positives and negatives to it. Would you recommend it, you know, for investors out there that are thinking about becoming a realtor? Would you say, would you recommend it to them or would you say just, you know, focus on your portfolio? It depends on how much cash you have because you're buying a job to start. So like I said, like, oh, I could have uh, not paid my realtor five grand, but now you're negative 10 grand on becoming a realtor. So how many deals did you have to buy that? You even justify that perhaps, right? And if you do find a good realtor who does give you the data right away, that's kind of what you probably want to be a realtor for if you're just an investor, like access to Geo Warehouse. So that's one of the things I send out to my investor clients right away. If they ask for like what that house sell for over there, I'll send them the client report of Geo Warehouse very quickly. That's kind of what you guys want to see all the time. So, so you are on social media. You're doing a lot of outside <laughs> the box realtor things that I think is bringing a lot of 
interest. Can you walk us through how you're differentiating yourself as a realtor? And sure. I think it's awesome. Like every day I look at Instagram as an example, and you've got some awesome video and you're really utilizing it really well. Mm -hmm. So I've been a realtor for two and a half years right now. So I've been investing since 2012, but only a realtor for two and a half years. And very early on, I did meet Matt McKeever, who's been on your podcast before. And most realtors will just, if you're brand new and you didn't have a good network, you would just listen to potentially your broker and they're going to tell you to go, you got to go knock on doors and you got to go send Christmas cards out every year and you got to go do this. And I call that like copying the realtor in front of you. And if somebody has been in the business for 20 years, that might still be successful to them. But if you're brand new and then you try to copy them, you're not going to be successful. For example, there's a guy who has say 20 bus benches in London, Ontario. If I bought 21 of them, I wouldn't be better than him. I can't copy him. I got to think about something new. So meeting Matt very early on, I didn't get brainwashed being like a used car salesman realtor. I just provided value to the investors and tried to, uh, always know about the next multifamily that's off market and like talk to landlords and property managers and all of a sudden I'm valuable as a realtor. So then thus eventually we invented the limo tour, which for the audience is my investor property tour that we ended up doing on a limo. If you do look at my Instagram, you'll, you'll see that Jeff Weibel had to do it on a limo, not on a school bus. So, and that was started off with just MLS multifamily deals or that were just on the MLS that we were coaching people about. But then that kind of turned into all off-market deals that I was networking and finding out about and calling landlords. And so it was very important to be on my tour. And then we just branded that with social media. So that was pretty unique. I'm in my first six months as a realtor and I'm hosting investment property tours, uh, standing out from anybody in my office or even in the city. And then I guess we've done 12 of those now and even outside of London, Kitchener and Windsor as well. But then fast forward, you were just at it, Sarah. We put on, Matt and I just love challenges. So we put on the Ontario Real Estate Conference in London, Ontario. And I think we had about 250 people out there. And Matt and I planned that on a cell phone and a laptop. <laughs> so, and there was a $20 website up until everybody showed up Saturday morning and wow. we weren't fraudsters. So, <laughs> by the way, that was an awesome event. Thank you. That was a labor of love. There's so <laughs> many moving parts to that. And we didn't have like a staff like Rain might have or. Right you know, Wealth Expo or something like that. We, it was just me and Matt answering where to park and where to go. Are you planning on doing another one next year? Sure, yes, we'll do an OREC, but we're also planning a Vegas one for oh. entrepreneurs. So it's one of the things Matt and I do, like you're talking about in this question, is like think outside the box. We love just picking dates and then forcing ourselves to figure it out. Like if we just said, hey, one day we should do a conference. Well, that'd be the end of that, right? The next week we'd be like, hey, we should do a conference. And they'll just... You know, I'm sure there's a lot of investors out there that say the same kind of thing. I should buy a triplex, right? Oh, you know, so we put a date on it and we just had to perform, right? So we had a lot of people that were showing up. So putting yourself outside your comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also portraying yourself as a leader. And I don't know if it's too soon to, to ask, you know, what kind of benefits have you seen come out of it in terms of you as a realtor or an investor, but I'm sure there will be some because you are that leader for many, you know, those 200 people. Well, that's the thing. So I always say, don't copy the realtor in front of you. So if everybody's just doing the same thing, I'm doing something different. I stand out like you're talking about. I'm really big on Instagram. These guys got me on YouTube now. And then I just get called being like, hey, Jeff, just want you to sell my grandma's house. And I get all these easy ones. I call them up just because I'm out there and I'm branding myself. So it's all about branding and marketing. Barely a realtor, more of a social media or marketing kind of a guy that just happens to do real estate, which is interesting because I can pivot if I want to put on an entrepreneurial conference in Las Vegas, where we're going to get these young 20 year olds that have Lamborghinis out there. But that's just an interesting story of like, how can you do this at 20? Because Canada doesn't teach me how to do this. They just teach me to go to school and, you know, go get a job with the government for not for 70 to 90 K. Right. Yeah. So. And retire when you're old and you're unfortunately sometimes too sick and 65, mm -hmm. 70, 75 years old mm -hmm. and all your life is pretty much behind you, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. So just been always trying something new, picking dates. Well, like, look at you guys just doing this podcast. Like, you picked a date and now you're doing it, right? I need a podcast. Yep. It is yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the best thing ever because the information that we have, like it's important and you probably agree to this. It's important to share it and it's important to help others get here because if I can do it, if Sarah can do it, Jeff, if you can do it, 
somebody else can do it and it's not as hard as people think. But I think the biggest difference is that action taking, right? Whatever it is, you come up with an idea and it may or may not work, but try it, take action on it and see what happens. And oftentimes you're going to fail and fail and fail, but you're going to have that one thing that's going to work and it's going to change your life. Absolutely. There are people out there that don't want to share all what we're talking about right now. Blueprints to make money and only 10% maybe even try. Like, so everybody keeps it so close to their chest, but just give away your info and you are positioning yourselves running this podcast as the, as the expert. And, and that's really fantastic right now. And I'm sure people are going to send you leads and be like, I know about this off market property. And like, you're in the position, you're branding yourself as that person, just same way like OREC is branding me. Like I have tons of listings right now. And the girls in the office were like, how do you, you hosted a conference and now you have like all these listings. Like, and like, they're just doing the normal real estate. And I'm like, well, you got to get out there. You got to meet people. You got to network. And then you hear, you never see a 50 unit building on the MLS. Right. So you yeah. got to network that, right? You got to like know about it. I call it the underground MLS. Absolutely. I think it's so great what you're doing by being like an industry leader. I know like Sarah and I are so passionate about giving this knowledge to people. You know, we really want to focus on millennials and this like lack of financial literacy that they have. And if we can pass on that knowledge, I say, why not? So mm-hmm. it's great. And it's going to come back to you tenfold. And like that's kind of in my and Matt McKeever's, uh, kind of mission statement we just give this knowledge away and it comes back somehow some people can't figure that out they want to see the roi at the end of the limo tour that night where people are dumping money onto the table being like i'll buy all the properties it doesn't work like that you get people just start trusting you in the ecosystem and then it just the the roi comes later so if you could give one piece of advice to a fellow millennial real estate or not real estate related what would that be well i think start getting active on social media because you're missing out right now if you're not on it. There's so much information to learn from. I was messaging with a realtor in Alabama today, just kind of getting some of his ideas. And so many people like shut their brain off to this or they're just trying to operate on their own. Don't like get out there, meet people, host a networking event, just do it. If if it doesn't exist in your city, just do it. Host an investor five to seven happy hour on a Friday and see who comes out and talk to them and learn because you want to surround yourself with like five people that are, uh, well, hopefully they're smarter and have more money than you above you, but like you're the average of the five people you hang around with. So you got to go meet these people and learn from them. And hopefully you're not the smartest one in the room, but you always want to be learning from somebody smarter and always take action. Just go do it. People used to always say, Oh, Jeff, you travel so much. You're so lucky. I'm like, no, I have a credit card and I just go do it. Like you can go do it too. And then when you go travel, you meet crazy people and, and you, They'll be telling you about some uh, investment in Miami and like, you'll like learn about something you've never would have done if you just stayed at home. So like, just get out there and take action and just try it every day, do something. I think that's great advice. I know analysis paralysis, we talk about it a lot in the real estate world. <laughs> it's so easy to just get sucked into, you know, analyzing the numbers, talking like you want to own a portfolio, but if you never, you know, go to an open house or start writing offers, you're never going to get very far. You have to take those risks. So. That's great advice. Uh, Absolutely. And like even the first properties, I'm sure they weren't perfect when you got the keys and you went there and something was wrong and you're like, what? Like, I thought this was all like proper. Like it should be perfect. Like for on one of mine, the tenants that were on the lease weren't really on the lease. And they're like, no, Sabrina lives in Vancouver and Sally lives in Halifax. They haven't lived here for years. And I'm like, what? Like I was naive thinking like it was all going to be perfect, but that's just two month headache. They were out of there later. And, uh, I call it first world problems coming from uh, the army background being like, it's not that big of a deal. And Matt McKeever has a great line. There's no problem when buying a house that usually $5,000 can't solve. So if you kind of think about that, it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe like that window is broken. And you're like, well, I'm pretty sure I can solve that for a couple hundred bucks. Right. So it's get over it. Like there's problems in real estate investing all the time. Just it's how can you deal with them? Exactly. When you weigh out the pros and cons, there's a lot more pros, but yes, it's definitely Mm -hmm. not a passive type of investing. Just out of curiosity, there's probably a lot of listeners that are wondering like, what does your portfolio consist of today? Okay. I have the triplex, which I just got. I'm not living in it right now, but I just got a manager. 
because I just had a baby and I just, just decided, like my wife was having birth. I was getting a text from a tenant saying the washing machine was broken and I just didn't want that in my life right now. So I was like, okay, I put my buddy on it to be the manager. So I have the triplex, which hosts the university students. But I just call them people, not student rental to make sure insurance companies like that. And then I own a duplex and I'm living in the one bedroom right now. And above me, I'm actually hosting Matt McKeever up above me and we turn that into an OREC office briefly because instead of me making 1500 bucks in rent, I put Matt in there so that we could make $10,000 a month in business from something. So that I kind of switched over from having just a tenant. I was, what's the point of having 1500 bucks when Matt and I can like plan? And it was perfect with the baby. I could just walk upstairs to the duplex uh, for a meeting in my slippers. So <laughs> rather than going anywhere. And then I own a joint venture duplex in Calgary. And I barely know the tenants' names out there. I just get a cash flow check every month. And that my joint venture partner runs that better. I got that one in 2013. And then lastly, I'm finally, I'm 34 now, finally buying a family home. I don't know how long we'll live there, but it's a new build. So it's being built. But I bought it last July. And since that, the paper has gone up by about $100,000. So far, so good on that one. So that's that. And mostly I've just been helping out the other investors. I didn't really want to pick up another little duplex. If I was going to get something, it would be big, big multifamily right now. That's amazing. Thank you so much for kind of giving us an <laughs> insight into your portfolio. I mean, oh, no problem. I hope for all of our listeners that they were paying attention because the things you said about making those sacrifices, living in a basement of your triplex so that you can live mortgage free, uh, just being super smart about renting the upper floor of the duplex. You know, those are things that they may seem small, but they really, it's just savvy thinking when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, investing in strategy. So that's really great. And those evolve all the time. You just kind of keep, why would I want to make this when I can make that? And like, interesting. And maybe when I leave here and Matt leaves, I might put my, I have a social media company as well. Maybe I put my nice. social media guy in here for minimal rent, but then he, his job is to make me a lot of money in social media. So that kind of thinking outside the box I have going on right now with tenants. Yeah, that's super. I think that's amazing. And, and what we really have to do in this market, you know, to just kind of stay ahead. So mm -hmm. give me an idea of what, say, like the next five years look like for you for investing. <laughs> like what would be your kind of longer term goals that way? Well, when Matt and I used to run a YouTube show called the Cashflow to Go show, and everybody would ask what our next step is all the time. And Oh, I always joke there's from Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones. He says, Indy, what's next? He says, I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. Thinking that the hero is supposed to have this master plan, but I didn't know I'd be putting on OREC. I didn't know that the next one would be Vegas. But if I was to think about some kind of a thing to add to my portfolio property, it would be, I would love a giant purpose building, easy, put a manager in it, like some big boy investing kind of, uh, big girl investing kind of property. That'd be pretty awesome. I would joint venture with that. I'll dabble in some flips maybe in the next year and a half. But one other thing Matt and I would like to do is rent a very expensive house and potentially a mansion with like good pool or something, either Airbnb or actually rental and start hosting masterminds out of it. So really kind of doing, yes, we'll make some profit, but we're really just trying to like help people like make them a lot of profit as well. And maybe bring you guys into the mansion and that kind of stuff for like talks on a Saturday, that kind of. So that's my big thinking. I'm not just trying to be a realtor to sell one more house next year. I don't think that's a good use of my time. Call it one more 10 plex right now. So that'd be sweet. Amazing. Yeah, that sounds so great. We would absolutely love to come and do some shows from the mansion. <laughs> You got to show up in a sports car. This sounds like a plan. I think we could arrange that. <laughs> I had no car for four years, too. I want to have the triplex. I walked wow. everywhere. And most people, they, when they know me, they, they're like, I can't believe Jeff Weibel didn't have a car. I only got a car a month into being a realtor after my broker was probably tired of driving me around. So, like, I was sacrificed. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so before we wrap up, we have a section called our lightning round. We're going to ask you three questions. And because this show is geared towards millennials, so question number one, what is your best millennial life hack advice? So what should all millennials apply today to improve their lives? It could be in any subject, not necessarily real estate. Mm -hmm. Just automate everything. So all your bills, get on some automated system. 
just because you can cut your grass to save 20 bucks doesn't mean you should because you could be making ten thousand dollars somewhere else by having somebody cut that grass for 20 bucks so automate everything in your life and focus on what's going to make you the real money and then you can spend more time with your friends and family and you're not worrying about cutting your grass painting one wall or something like that just automate 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 great advice yeah, that's great. So what would you recommend as like your favorite app? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be real estate related, even maybe just to keep you organized. Uh, what do you kind of use for technology that way? My favorite app is my calculator because that's the one that makes me the most money. I always pull up the calculator two, three times a day all the time, just kind of going over stuff. So use your calculator. We learn all that math in school, but really plus and minus pretty much all we need to know. And maybe multiply of a percentage. And last question. Question number three, what is your favorite podcast? I have been kind of listening to select uh, Ty Lopez ones, especially his like social media marketing ones, learning about that a bit more. Cause I'm just fascinated with online making money because even as a realtor, I'm making like today's money like physically, but I love to make passive like laptop money from my YouTube ads and this kind of stuff. I think that gets me back to my Tim Ferriss kind of roots of the four hour work week, which becoming a realtor got me away from because you're working every single hour of the week as a realtor. But uh, yeah, getting back to passive income. So just Ty Lopez has been going on about social media marketing and I'm trying to do that as well and try to make some money passively. So. So actually, I actually have a follow-up question. Are you making money passively? And if somebody wants to do that with a YouTube show or social media, like how do you suggest they start? Well, just do it. Get on there. Do it with your iPhone. Don't buy a $5,000 camera. Get on YouTube. And one of the things that Matt and I are developing right now is courses. And they come from necessity because so many people ask me real estate questions like, I call them kids, 18 uh, year olds from like San Diego will be like, Hey Jeff, you got any advice? I just got my real estate license. Well, I can't answer these people in three or four times a day about it, or I can't coach them all for free. Not all of them. So I'm developing a real estate course. So what you could do is have your YouTube channel giving out all the free data that nobody will use. Only 10% will. And then you could actually have a course on teachable. I think it's .com and you just upload your course on it. So Matt's planning on making a burr course on it. And some of the wholesalers are going to do a wholesale course. And I want my brother to do an Airbnb course. Like the public in general, like you can Google half this information, but they love it in sequential order and they love that they've paid. So they actually follow through. Cause if I just give out the course for free, nobody ever would do it. And it's fascinating learning from like Graham Stephan, YouTuber with currently 150,000 subscribers. And he's making $9,000 passively from the YouTube ads and $6,000 a month off of his course. And he lives in LA, but in Southwestern Ontario, if we were making $15,000 passively, I think that'd be pretty awesome in our city. So. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. I mean, passive income, we're all about that. So. Mm -hmm. Now, if people do want to reach out to you, uh, where's the best place that they can find you for questions, your website, any of your social media accounts you want to direct people to? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Jeff Weibo, uh, YouTube backslash Jeff Weibo. But uh, yeah, I'm probably on Instagram hours out of the day. Instagram made me a lot of money. I always say that, not maybe directly, but indirectly, because you can post about a property or you can tease about a fourplex that's upcoming and then clients reach out to you and then you can get it done privately. So hit me up on Instagram if you want any uh, tips for real estate or you want to know when the next limo tour is, find me there the easiest. Pretty quick on text as well, but if I don't know yet, Instagram is probably the easiest. What else I got? Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. I can't beat the president. He's doing better than me on that. Um, <laughs> but I always say that's interesting. If you have a Twitter account, you can be the president of the United States. So all these people that like, oh, I'm not on social media. It's about the attention and the president does have a face attention because he's tweeting so much, regardless of what you think about that politics. That's what all the YouTube's about. That's what all the Instagram's about. It's, and you're the one that people are listening to right or wrong, really on the internet. So.
That's great advice. Thank you so much. And on that note, Jeff, we really want to thank you for being on our podcast and sharing your knowledge and the social media stuff that you guys are doing is amazing. So if any listeners out there want to take a look, the YouTube show, the Instagram, I mean, it's definitely quite entertaining and it is definitely very knowledgeable. Like you got, you guys are teaching, you guys are helping. So kudos to you guys. And thank you so much. Thank you. This was fantastic. Thanks for having me. Take care. Hey guys, before you go, I wanted to ask you a question. What's stopping you from starting or growing your own real estate investment portfolio? I know for me, before I started, I had plenty of reasons and at the time they all seemed very valid, but as I started my journey, these reasons slowly fell away and eventually only one reason remained. What was actually stopping me was having a proven, actionable, repeatable system. I didn't have that. And the way that was going to change was by investing in myself, learning, listening, and looking for ways that worked. And also, most importantly, discovering what didn't and not making those mistakes again. Fast forward to today, I now have a proven, repeatable series of action steps that has enabled me to build my seven-figure portfolio consisting of multiple homes. And I'm able to manage that in two to three hours a month. Is that something that you would want? Well... I've actually taken all the knowledge I've accumulated and put that into a comprehensive step-by-step online program. It's called Rise, and it's a program that will help you from where you are now to where you want to be faster and with less of the headaches that I had. So it consists of all the templates and the resources that I use, plus over 40 instructional videos that you get lifetime access to for just a small one-time investment. And, you know, my recommendation is to make the time now to invest in yourself and grow your portfolio to seven figures so that you can bring your retirement dreams closer. If you want some more information about Rise, just go to sarahlarby.com forward slash R-I-S-E to access more details and book your spot. Thanks so much for listening to Where Should I Invest with your host, Sarah Larby. Make sure to listen in next time. We'll catch you on the next episode of Where Should I Invest.